Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about halogenation of benzene. And, and I'm just once again going to put up here a, a quick comparison to, to alkenes that you might remember that alkenes like cyclohexene can react directly with the hal with halogens like chlorine and bromine and generate uh, addition products even at room temperature where um, benzene on the other hand is going to behave differently uh, and this is one of the things that helped folks understand that benzene was not to be treated like another any any regular or any ordinary alkene. However, it isn't to say that benzene doesn't react with halogens under the right conditions. Um, if a Lewis acid catalyst like iron trichloride Or aluminum trichloride are added is added to the reaction, then this reaction does in fact lead to halogenation. Uh, and I'm going to show the mechanism using chlorine, but in all cases, uh, bromine with the the iron bromide or aluminum bromide uh, is going to work just as well the same way. And that's because while uh, the chlorine-chlorine bond can be sort of polarized uh, through, you know, the shifting around of, of, of dipoles and the induced dipole thing, and the chloride anion is still a good leaving group, it's just not a good enough electrophile for the aromatic ring. Remember that the electrophilic, the the the, you know, the electrophilic attack step requires breaking the aromaticity, so we need a good electrophile. <laughs> So let me show you what this good electrophile looks like. And then and you can be free to, to say all kinds of weird things about it. Because it is going to look weird. I mean, I need an aluminum. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The aluminum. Not acetine, not actinium. There we go. Aluminum. I apologize for all that hidden type. There we go. Here is the active electrophile. Uh, and the active part of the electrophile, even though it's a positive charge on the chlorine in here in the middle, is actually this end chlorine. Uh, and so this thing acts a little bit like it was a, a Cl plus cation. Uh, which is a silly thing, looking thing indeed. Uh, this active electrophile forms uh, pretty straightforward from the reaction of chlorine and 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 it can be aluminum or or iron, so it can be either one. So I draw drew aluminum here. Uh, I'll draw iron in, in the, the my mechanism. Uh, and in fact, there are other metal chloride Lewis acid catalysts out there, but but. Uh, Iron trichloride is nice because it's pretty low toxicity and doesn't do much do much else. Uh, both it and aluminum chloride are, are relatively inexpensive, but uh, the formation of this um, of this species is really pretty straightforward. The chlorine and you know, chlorine molecule just associates with the the Lewis acid catalyst, and now it's ready to go. What we have what we've essentially done is taken what was a good leaving group, Cl minus, and made it a supercharged leaving group. And we have done similar things in the reactions of alcohols and, and other functional groups. So while chlorine is a good leaving group on its own, now we have this, this supercharged leaving group thing. I'm just going to copy it. Here's our electrophile, and again, remember that where I have iron, you can have aluminum, depending on what reagent that you're using. So you get nucleophilic attack at this chlorine, the leaving group does its thing, it leaves. We get our, our uh, carbocation intermediate. 
And you know, if you've been watching these videos and you're you're familiar with a certain thing and you've been wondering, why isn't Dr. Norris uh, using a specific term? Like some people call these things sigma complexes. I don't like the word, I'm not gonna use it. So, um, but if you've heard that these intermediates are sometimes called sigma complexes, that, that's actually a real thing. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, here we have our carbocation intermediate, and, and like every other electrophilic aromatic substitution, something basic needs to come along and take that extra proton so we can regenerate our aromaticity in the end. Uh, make my box there a little bit shorter so that I can get my, I feel like I have a reaction arrow in here that I can do something with. So, uh, just, let me see. All right, so the only other thing we have in the reaction, however, is this, this tetrachloroferrane anion, and it is the base that is used. Uh, and so one of the chlorines comes off, takes the hydrogen, and, and this reaction, if you do it in the lab, generates hydrogen chlorine chloride gas, depending on the solvent, will bubble up out and you have to trap it or something with. And it actually regenerates the, the Lewis acid catalyst. So you don't need to use a whole stoichiometric equivalent of the iron chloride or aluminum chloride. In the next video, uh, I'm gonna show you how to, uh, just briefly how to do iron, and, or I'm sorry, iodine and fluorine. Uh, as, as is typical, those two halogens behave a little bit different than, than the other two. Thank you for watching.